Seal Test Milk, Cheese, and Ice Cream Divisions of National Dairy present Seal Test Variety Theater with two of Hollywood's most distinguished citizens, Bob Hope and Robert Young. And here is that glamorous star of radio and pictures, your hostess for the next half hour, Dorothy L'Amour. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, everyone. In behalf of Henry Russell, the orchestra, and the Crew Chiefs Quartet, I'd like to welcome you to the Seal Test Variety Theater. And as for you, Robert Young and Bob Hope, all I can say to you for dropping over is th- thank you. Hello, Donnie. Glad you invited us. Yes, Donnie, it's wonderful to be here, and I bet you feel real great about having your own radio program this season. It does feel wonderful, Bob. What's new on the Doris Day show? Hmm. <laughs> Looks like you traded in your old sarong for a couple of writers, huh? However, I suppose you know I have a new sponsor this year. Don't look now, but I think, think there's a plug coming. Not exactly, but as we're talking, the ushers are running up and down the aisles with washcloths, scrubbing the audience with swan. <laughs> oh, you in the back there. More suds, please. Uh, isn't anybody going to talk to me? I, I don't have a sponsor. You poor dear. Well, it's not quite as bad as that. I do get an occasional pie in the face on truth or consequences. <laughs> Well, Bob, if it'll do you any good, I have an in with Art Linkletter. Oh, gee, you would? Could you? Wait, I have a better idea. Have you got anything to give away? <laughs> have you got a house? Yes, but I uh, live in it with my family. Well, how many in your family? Well, there's my wife and four kids. Four kids? Mm-hmm. I got an idea. Why don't you call it Stop the Pablum? <laughs> Take it easy, Sonny. Yes, sir, Stop the Pablum. I can hear the announcer saying, I have a lady in the playpen, doctor. Uh, and ladies I... and gentlemen, we'll indemnify you. If you're listening to another program while the Robert Young show is on the air, we'll guarantee that you'll get at least one kid. Hey, that's ridiculous. How can you guarantee a child? It's easy. All you have to do is guess the mystery mother. Thanks, fellas. And now stay with us, everybody, because there's a song coming up and a swell comedy sketch with Robert Young. Get the best, get seal test. I'm sure the red and white seal test seal is familiar to you. But do you know what it means? Actually, it's a pledge to you. A pledge of top quality and purity. Seal test milk must meet exceptionally high standards for purity, quality, and flavor before it can bear the famous seal test symbol. So always ask for seal test milk to be sure and make it homogenize vitamin D milk for extra smoothness with cream in every drop and the extra protection of added vitamin D. Order seal test homogenize vitamin D milk from your grocer or local seal test dairy. Get the basket seal test. And now our glamorous singing star gets herself a one-way ticket for the Ozarks. And with the help of those four crew chiefs turned hillbilly, gives a real mountain treatment to that cornball cantata, Feudin' Fussin' and a-fightin'. Feudin' a-fussin' and a-fightin'. Sometimes it gets to be exciting. Don't like them ornery neighbors down by the creek. We'll be plumb out of neighbors next week. Grandma, poor old grandma. Why they have to shoot poor grandma. She lies neath the clover. Someone caught her bending over. Picking up a daisy, feuding, a fussing, and a fighting. This is a wrong that needs a righting. Let's get that funeral service over, and then we can start in a feuding again. Oh, daughter, baby daughter, poisoned all the neighbor's chicken. Till she could run like the dickens I hit her with a shovel Feudin' a fussin' and a fightin' No use a standin' here a cussin' 
Let's give our daughter a pistol now that she's four and go feuding and fighting some more. A great actor, ladies and gentlemen, is one whose talents range in many directions. For example, one year he gives a brilliant portrayal of a detective in Crossfire, and the next a heartwarming and very amusing portrayal of a harassed father in Sitting Pretty. These are but two roles in the extraordinary career of one of our guest stars tonight, who will soon be seen in the RKO picture, Baltimore Escapade. He's my very good friend, Robert Young. Carlton Cadell, will you set the scene while Bob and I give a last quick look at our cues? Well, folks, our comedy sketch tonight was written especially for Robert Young and Dorothy L'Amour by Bill Danch. <coughs> the scene is the living room of an American home. It's quite a bit like many other American homes. The same fireplace, the same furniture, and the same husband with the same newspaper. He doesn't glance up as his wife comes in from the kitchen. Uh, I'll dry the dishes when you're ready, dear. I'd rather you didn't. Why not? Because I've already done them. Oh, you sh- you should have called me. You know I always like to help. <laughs> it, uh... Skip it. No, that's not right. Well, I... it's not your job anyway. If anybody ought to help, it ought to be Sue. Ha. What's the meaning of that? I'm just trying to picture that kid with an apron on. She'd be more at home on the range. No, no, don't get all worked up again. Sue's all right. She's a perfectly normal schoolgirl. Yeah, with a perfectly normal crush on Daniel Boone. Are we going through that again? Yes, we're going to go through that again. Look, dear, she'll get over it. She's just an impressionable kid. Well, why does she have to get impressed with Daniel Boone? I don't know. It's just one of those things. Well, I don't like it. She even goes around trying to dress like the guy. She cuts fringes into her slacks so they look like buckskin pants. She only did it once. And wearing that beaver tail off Billy Howard's hot rod for a hat. (laughs) Why can't she pick out some nice normal idol? Most kids her age go for somebody like Frank Sinatra, Bob Hope, or Perry Como, or Robert Young. Who? Robert Young. Well, who's he? An actor. Oh. But no, she has to go and choose an old pioneer scout for a dream man. The guy probably smelled from Buffalo. That will do. You can say that again, and I finally decided to do something about it. Please, not again. Don't worry, this scheme is one that's going to work. I finally figured out a way to beat this phobia of Sue's. I talked Johnny McCarty into putting on a costume like Daniel Boone and coming here tonight. Oh, frankly, it evades me. What good will that do? It'll do plenty good. He'll drop in tonight and announce that he's Daniel Boone. Sue'll go for it. Anybody on cloud eight like she is will believe anything. She wants to. I don't think... You're not supposed to, honey. I'll do the thinking tonight. Anyway, Johnny, or should I say Mr. Boone, will explain in his own picturesque backwoods speech just why our little girl should get herself another dream man, see? No. Look, you just trust in me, will you? I told Johnny to get here by eight. It's almost that now. Uh, Call Sue down, will you? She ought to be here when he arrives. Go ahead. Call her. Well, really, I... Well, all right. Sue? Sue, dear, will you come down a moment? Okay, Mother. Are you sure this is the right way to handle this? Sure, I'm sure. Now, don't worry about it. I hope you didn't want me for something, Mother. I promised Joan Paby and I'd meet her at the drugstore tonight for a soda. No, no, you can't. But why? I go there to meet her lots of times. Well, uh, tonight's something special, see? I... Why, well, we have a surprise for you. Really? What is it? Guess, dear. All right. Let's see. Is it a hunting knife? No, no, it's not that. I know. It's some flint and steel so I can make a fire to send smoke signals. You're getting warm. <laughs> Gee, this is keen. Let me see. Get here... What did you say, Daddy? Oh, nothing. I was just talking to myself. Go on, dear. Keep guessing. Oh, it's him. Who? Daniel. Uh, you'll see. You'll see. Now, don't go away. Come in. Why? Why, it's... It's Daniel Bone. Evening, folks. How y'all? Oh, brother. (laughs) But... But, Mr. Bone, I... I thought you were... Uh, Dad? Why... Shucks, no, Dadder. I'm too ornery a cuss to stay put for long. Uh, won't you come in and have a seat, Mr. Boone? Uh, may I take your coonskin cap? Uh, no, ma. Reckon I'll just keep it on. Hey, thank you just the same. 
Well, what's uh, new in the trailblazing business, Mr. Boone? <laughs> Just call me Daniel. Okay, Danny boy. <laughs> Did somebody say something funny? Oh, Miss, I mean Daniel. You'll have to excuse Daddy. Sometimes he's sort of, well, corny. Uh-huh. I think I know what you mean. Well, I gotta hand it to you, too. That's a terrific makeup you've got. I mean, you really look the part. You just keep right on talking, dear. Now, now, Sue, gal, I've been keeping my eye on you. I finally figured it was about time to step in and explain a few things. You mean like this business of Sue setting you up as her dream man? I'll get to it, son. Yes. Uh, now, Sue, gal, I was what some folks might call a, a old... Uh, well, a, a colorful character, I guess. You certainly are. Was. You mean were. <laughs> now, 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 it's easy to see how maybe some young folks might set me up on a pedestal, but, well, I was just another fella doing his work. A lot of folks faced dangers in other ways than mine. Well, there was George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and Abe Lincoln and, oh, lots of others. And if you want to come right on up to date, why, well, General Eisenhower. So you see, Sue Gal, if you want a real hero, well, you pick you somebody like that, huh? Put an old codger like me clean out of your mind. But you... No, no, you, you just forget all about me. Now promise, will you? But I... All right, Daniel. If you say so, I'll try. Good. Well, now I guess I'll be getting back. Uh, so long. So long, Daniel. Goodbye. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks a lot. <sighs> well, that was a good evening's work, wasn't it? Oh, it certainly was. Did you see how Sue absorbed that? Oh, you got to hand it to Johnny. He sure did a swell job as Daniel Boone. And frankly, he surprised me the way he looked. Why? I'll get it. Hello? Johnny? Oh, hiya, Johnny. Say, you really did... Huh? What, Johnny? Oh, I see. Well, the substitute you sent did a wonder... Huh? Okay, Johnny. Yeah, okay. So, so long, Johnny. That was Johnny. Really? Yeah, he called to apologize for not getting here. A cop picked him up in his costume on the way over. That's too bad. But the fella he sent was perfect. That's just it. He didn't send anybody. Thanks, Robert Young. It was fun doing that sketch with you. In just about a minute, you're going to hear from the crew chiefs and Henry Russell's orchestra, as well as from Bob Hope, who I'm sure will have a laugh or two up his sleeve. Here's good advice that's sure to pay, so listen to what the man has to say. This is the time of year to get a new lease. I mean a new lease on life. And one of the best ways to get it is to start drinking more seal test homogenized vitamin D milk. At least a pint a day for adults and a quart a day for children. It has what it takes to help give you that old zip and zing. Plenty of health-building vitamins, minerals, and proteins. And what a wonderful flavor. Smooth, creamy, rich, delicious. Every glass is brimming with good health and good taste. From now on, drink plenty of Seal Test homogenized vitamin D milk. The famous Seal Test symbol is your assurance of top quality, purity, and fine, rich flavor. Always get the best. Get Seal Test. It's America's first choice. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, the crew chiefs, Henry Russell and the orchestra, proceed to blast down the walls with their version of Jericho. Jericho, Jericho, was a jazzy old town. Jericho, Jericho, like her music low down. We know she fought the fall till their trumpets blew. Jericho, Jericho, well, the same as we do. Don't 
Josh Smith, the Battle of Jericho, 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 Josh Smith, the Battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Josh Smith, the Battle of Jericho, 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 Josh Smith, the Battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. What a panic in the town when the walls came tumbling down. Jericho, Jericho. Was a jazzy old town, Jericho, long ago, like the music wore down. Then all the walls came in when the trumpets blew. So Jericho, Jericho, the trumpets blew, then they knew she'd fall. Wrecking Crew. And now, folks, here he is, the star of screen, radio, television, vaudeville, cafes, personal appearances, and fat boy for the Cleveland Indians, Bob Hope. Bob Hope. I've also wrist massager at all the thrifty drugstore pinball machines. But anyway, thank you, Hildegard, and now I have... I love that headgear you put on there. Yeah. I thought it was growing there. But I want to tell you, I have a rather sad announcement to make, so if you'll just put your eyelashes at half-mast, I'll tell you that on October 12th, I discovered that Columbus has been getting credit for discovering America. And I want to tell you, he had as much to do with it as Crosby. I'll bet you don't know who did. Well, it was one of the Wright brothers, but I can't remember whether it was Wilbur or Orville. <laughs> oh, no. No, it so happens that one of my ancestors was responsible, Dottie. You've heard of that great Viking captain, Eric the Red? Of course. Well, my boy was Herman the Yellow. <laughs> he had no more guts than an old tennis racket, believe me. As a matter of fact, he used to desert his ship before the rats did. Well, how did uh, you come upon all this uh, priceless and useless bit of information? Well, I was up in my attic running barefoot through some swan wrappers. Another plug in my contract, you know. <laughs> and I came across the log of Herman the Yellow's old Viking ship. It wasn't a very sturdy boat. What was the name of it? It was the good ship Lollipop. Everyone aboard was a sucker. And would you like to... <laughs> would you like to hear the story from the beginning? And if you don't, it's going to be mighty quiet around here for the next six minutes. <laughs> Well, I've struggled through the road to Rio, the road to Morocco, and the road to Zanzibar. I might as well try the road to America. Well, suppose we go back to the day when my ancestors set sail from the Scandinavian town, which is now known as Stockholm, Sweden. What was the name of the town then? Stockholm, Sweden. Those what Swedes are awfully stubborn, you know. <laughs> but let's go back a few years to January the 18th, 1464, when Your we birth- set sail for the New World. You got an awful lot of sneaky stuff over there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, television was here. I could get even with her. I could lift her hair and drop that writer out of there. But I want to say. You know, you ruined the whole thing. We had a we had a mood here. We had sort of a luck show mood. And you've loused the whole thing. You sneak, you would. Now, where are we? Your birthday in 1464. We're aboard. We're aboard the good ship Lollipop. Believe me. Good ship Lollipop, and that's me. I'm the... I'm something here. Anyway, I say... We had music, didn't we, Henry? That's a... Don't... No, please, don't wake the boys up again. Please. I know. Don't show me, kid. I can read now. Avast there, you swabs, for your aft, aft your fore. <laughs> Swab the deck and flotsam your jetsam. <laughs> Do you hear me? I wonder what time it is. <laughs> I know, but how about the little hand? Hey, you there.
there, first mate. First thing we got to do is take a sounding. How deep is the water? Twelve feet, sir. Good. Now, how deep is it outside the boat? <laughs> Pardon me, Skipper, but uh, we've just discovered a stowaway on board. Here she is. Oh, please, sir, don't throw me overboard. He's dressed like a cabin boy, but between you and me, I don't think he's even a boy. Looks like a cabin. <laughs> no, that's wrong. No, I'm sorry, sir. Right, it wrong. It doesn't look like a cabin. <laughs> Look like a cabin. Look, look here, Stowaway. Well, you don't look like any Viking crewman to me. Well, it's my uniform. Well, there's something in that. But I have no light here. Well, be sure that no one in this boat finds out you're a girl besides me. Sailors are very. Sailors are very superstitious about having a woman on board. And if our secret is discovered, they'll feed me to the seagulls. Feed you to the seagulls? That'd be awful. Yeah, that'd be the first time a bird ever laid ham and eggs. <laughs> a few days later, I was sitting in my cabin when the mate came in. Oh, if you'll excuse me, sir, but I'm worried about that stowaway. You mean the men suspect she's a girl? Well, I'm not sure, but lately there's been a rumbling in the forecastle. Oh, that. Well, just give him a double ration of bicarbonate. <laughs> very well, sir. I must admit, she's pretty baggage. She is pretty baggage. If no one calls for her in 30 days, she's mine. I've been looking everywhere for you. Not only are you the greatest discoverer, but you're so attractive, so charming, so full of uh, savoir-faire. You mean it? Yes. I have so much more than Columbus. Why should I fight it? Don't jest. I love you. Just look out there. The whole world is ours. I could see much better if you'd move your nose. <laughs> it's not my nose, it's the prow of the ship. Where were we? Captain! What is it, second maid? Your secret's been discovered. You mean? Yes, the crew found out that your cabin boy isn't. We must throw her overboard. Wait, if she goes, I go. We're going steady. <laughs> we can't help that. Here she goes. Don't let them, don't let them. Hey! Well, if we don't hear another splash pretty soon, I'm even yellower than I think I am. <laughs> oh, well, here goes. You're so brave, Esther. Oh, it's nothing. My rubber shoulder pads will keep us afloat. <laughs> and look. <laughs> and look. We're approaching America. I can see people on the shore. Who are you? Indians. What tribe of Indians? Cleveland Indians. This <laughs> It was great having you with us. Really wonderful. And now stand by once more, everybody. There's a song coming up and some great news concerning our guests for next week. Get the basket seal test. Here's the sweetest bargain in a month of Sundays. A chocolate marshmallow nut sundae for only 25 cents. The seal test fountain treat of the month. Rich chocolate sauce, mellow marshmallow, and crunchy nuts. And underneath it all, that wonderful Seal Test vanilla ice cream. What a super Sunday! But that's not all. Seal Test has another October special. Luscious Seal Test strawberry tarts. Dreamy smooth vanilla ice cream topped with crushed strawberries, red juicy ripe berries, and a perky halo of rich whipped cream. Good? You'll say they're heavenly. Add a real party flavor to dinner tomorrow with Seal Test strawberry tarts, the dessert of the month. And stop in at your nearest Seal Test fountain for the fountain treat of the month. A chocolate marshmallow nut sundae. Whenever you crave ice cream... Get the basket seal test. One of the most haunting tunes from the picture Lulabelle is the song of the same name. Henry Russell, who is the composer of the tune... Now leads the orchestra and the crew chiefs, and yours truly, in an arrangement which we hope you'll like. Lulu Bell, exotic as an orchid fair, with ivory face and raven hair, 
and sea green eyes with Lulu Bell. Every move was charming and so alarming that it always tore apart each lover's heart. Oh, Lulu Bell. With a purse of gold With poetry and songs they told Her fatal spell I know you do the same And die Then in the flame The flame of love the love of Lulu Bob Hope and Robert Young, it was only wonderful having you here. Your appearance tonight contributes to a fine cause, the establishment of the American Federation of Radio Artists Welfare Insurance Fund. If you are a young man between the ages of 17 and 34, you have an opportunity to make a big contribution towards keeping the peace by joining the new National Guard. You'll be able to keep your civilian job, too. Contact your local unit or write to the Adjutant General in your state capital now. Remember... The National Guard defends America. Well, that's about it for tonight. Next Thursday night, we'll be back with Dick Powell and Abbott and Costello. So try and be with us. Until then, for Henry Russell, the crew chiefs, and tonight's guests, this is Dorothy Lamour saying good night, keep well, keep happy, and keep listening. <laughs> Bob Hope may soon be seen in the new Paramount picture, Pale Face. Continuity for Seal Test Variety Theater is written by Howard Harris, and direction is by Glenn Hall Taylor. Tune in next Thursday at this same time, when Seal Test Milk and Ice Cream again presents Seal Test Variety Theater, starring Dorothy L'Amour. Seal Test Incorporated and Associate Companies are divisions of National Dairy Products Corporation. This is Carlton Cadell speaking. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.